we're starting our new unit on analytical trigonometry and basically it's going to work with solving trigonometric equations but we need some formulas and some um, foundations um, beyond what we've already learned in the class to help us with this so today we're going to talk about the sum and difference formulas of trig functions and the co-function identities so by the end of today's class you should be able to use the sum and difference formulas to evaluate trigonometric functions and use the difference formulas for for a trig to prove the co-function identities and then memorize the co-function identities. So here are the sum and difference formulas for um, sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine, if you're adding two sine functions together, it'd be sine of the first function times cosine of the second plus cosine of the first times sine of the second. And for the sine function, it's the same pattern except you have a minus in between. So the sum formula for sine, um, think S, is sine, which means same sine. So for you're going to have the same sign in between your two terms. And plus and plus, minus and minus. So you have the same signs added together. Plus and plus, minus and minus. But the same the signs are the same, but the trig functions in each term are different. You have sine of the first term times cosine of the second num second angle plus cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. So the trig functions are different with the, the sum and difference formula for sine. But the sine between the two terms is the same as the, si as the sine in the formula. All right, for cosine, it's different. Um, if I want to find the cosine of u plus v, I take cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus cos uh, sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. And then for the difference formula, it's cosine mu cosine v plus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. So C, remember constant functions. So that means when you have a C, your functions are constant. So for cosine, you have cosine u cosine v minus sine u sine v. And for the same thing for the difference formula. The constants the it's constant function so the functions are the same different signs for the sum formula there's a minus sign in between it for the difference formula there's a plus sign between okay now looking at our tangent formula tangent for, sum formula for tangent is tangent of the first angle plus tangent of the second angle that looks I'll make that a better v divided by 1 minus the, the tangent of the first angle times the tangent of the second angle. So notice the top sign is the same as the sign in our trig function. So I have a plus uh, for the sum formula for tangent, the top is a plus, and then, the, then you change the sign in the denominator, it's minus. For the difference formula of tangent, it's the top um, sign in between the two functions is minus, and the bottom is plus. So tangent of u minus tangent of v divided by 1 plus tangent of u tangent v. All right, let's look at how we would um, work with this. So if I wanted to find the sine of pi over 12, I need to think of two angles on my unit circle that will add or subtract to equal pi over 12. So I would think about, well, I know 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 gives us pi over 12. And 4 pi over 12 simplifies down to pi over 3. The 3 pi over 12 simplifies down to pi over 4. So pi over 3 minus pi over 4 gives us pi over 12. So I'm going to rewrite pi over 12, the sine of pi over 12, as the sine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. And so now I'm going to plug those angles into my um, sine formula. Remember, sine are the same sine, different functions. So my formula would be sine of pi over 3 times cosine of pi over 4 minus the cosine of pi over 3 times the sine of pi over 4. Now to evaluate this, we gotta go back to our unit circle. So remember our unit circle and think of our first quadrant of the unit circle and the values that we know. So remember um, at zero radians, we have one comma zero and then we're gonna count down. So that'd be square root of three over two and one half, square root of two over two and square root of two over two. And then at 60 degrees, it's one half the square root of three over two. So sine of pi over three would be square root of three over two Cosine of pi over 2 is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 would be 1 half. And the sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. So we're going to do multiplication first. So that gives us square root of 6 over 4 minus square root of 2 over 4. 
Then we're going to subtract and make a single fraction, square root of um, 6 minus square root of 2 over 4. Now, if I could simplify, you would simplify, but this one does not simplify, so that would be my answer. All right, I want you to try the next problem. Okay, we're going to find the cosine of 75 degrees. So first I could say the cosine of 75 degrees is equal to the cosine of 45 degrees plus 30 degrees. So I'm going to use the cosine sum formula, which is cosine of the first angle, which is 45 degrees, times cosine of 30 degrees minus sine of, of um, 45 degrees times sine of 30 degrees. So referring back to my unit circle, um, cosine of 45 degrees square root of 2 over 2, cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, sine of 45 degrees square root of 2 over 2, and sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Multiplying the two terms first minus the multiplying of the next two terms and combining like terms. And yes, look, I got the same answer. I wonder why that happened. But it's okay. Um, you're going to get some different answers as you work through this. So that's one application of using um, the sum and difference formula. So let's look at another one where I can find angles that are not on my unit circle. And this goes back to that right triangle trigonometry. So we're going to find the exact value of sine of u plus v if we know that sine of u is 4 fifths and, is in, and u is between 0 and pi over 2, and cosine of v is negative 12 thirteenths, and v is between pi over 2 and u. So let's first look at the angle u. Given information between 0 and pi over 2 tells us that it is in quadrant 1 which means that sine and cosine will be positive. So those are the two angles I need to know. So I'm going to draw my right triangle and for angle U in quadrant 1, and it was given that sine of U was 4 fifths. So that means opposite side over hypotenuse. So my opposite side is 4, my hypotenuse is 5. Now you can do your um, Pythagorean theorem for this and to find your missing side, but hopefully right now you've been able to start recognizing your Pythagorean triplets, and it's okay if you can just recognize that this was 3 from the very beginning, um, but if you need to notice all I, to get that three, I just did a Pythagorean identity. So I know that, that our adjacent side is now three. So cosine is three fifths, which is adjacent side over opposite side. Now I'm gonna look at the information about angle V. So I'm gonna do a new diagram, label it angle V. I was given that for angle V, it was between pi over two and pi, so that tells us I'm in quadrant two. So I'm gonna draw my, my representative right triangle in quadrant two. Labeled that um, central angle as angle V. And so I was given that cosine is equal to negative 12, 13. So that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So my adjacent side is negative 12. My hypotenuse is 13. Using Pythagorean identity or recognizing my Pythagorean triplet here. We figure out that the missing side is 5. So our opposite, that tells us that our sine of V must be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Or in this case, that would be... 5 over 13. So now I'm going to go, I, the original problem asked us to find the sine of u plus v. So that would be my formula for sine, my sum formula for sine would be sine of my first angle. So sine of my first angle times cosine of my second plus cosine of my first angle plus cosine of my first angle sine of my second angle. So in this instance, that would be sine of u, which we have, to, which was given to us as four fifths, times cosine of v, which was given as negative twelve thirteenths, plus cosine of u, which we found with our right triangle trigonometry to be three fifths, and sine of v, which we found from right triangle trigonometry to be five thirteenths. So again, multiplying the first two terms together. I get negative 48 over 65 plus 15 over 65. Adding those together, negative 48 plus 15 is negative 33 um, 60 fifths, and that fraction does not simplify down. So the sine of u plus b is negative 60, uh, 33 of 60 fifths. Okay, now it's your turn to try one. Find the cosine of x plus y, given this information. First thing I want to do is find my missing pieces for my angle um, x, so it was given us in quadrant 1, so I'm going to draw my representative rectangle in quadrant 1. We know our hypotenuse is 3 and our opposite side is, is uh, our opposite side is 3, our hypotenuse is 5. Using our Pythagorean and triplets, I figured out my other side was 4. Now I'm going to look at angle y. So y was found in between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, so that tells me it must be in quadrant 4. So drawing my representative rectangle in quadrant 4, labeling my central angle as y. I was given that cosine is equal to 2 to the square root of 5 over 5, and cosine is adjacent side over hypotenuse. So that tells my adjacent side is 2 to the square root of 5. My hypotenuse is 5. 
So I need to figure out my opposite side by using Pythagorean, I, um, the Pythagorean identity. So that gives us y squared plus 2 to the square root of 5 squared is equal to 5 squared. Solving that, I find that y is equal to the square root of 5. Okay, But I am in quadrant 4. So remember in quadrant 4, um, your x is negative. I mean, your x is positive, your y is negative. So make sure that we, when we do our work here, we're going to use the negative, um, cos, uh, negative square root of 5. Is cosine x times cosine y minus sine x times sine y. Okay, cosine of x is equal to 4 fifths. My cosine of y is equal to 2 to the square root of 5 over 5. It was given to us. Minus, our sine of x was given 3 fifths. And our sine of y is going to be negative square root of 5 over 5. Okay, multiplying across of the first two fractions together. And then multi multiplying the second two fractions together. And we get our answer of 11 the square root of 5 over 25. And that would be the cosine of x plus y. Okay, let's see how you did with this difference formula tangent. So remember, our, our difference formula tangent is as follows. All right, so now we got to figure out what the tangent of x is equal to. Well, tangent of x is opposite over adjacent, so that would be 3 fourths. And tangent of y is also the opposite side over the adjacent, which would be negative square root of 5 over 5, over 2 to the square root of 5, which if we rationalize that and get rid of our radicals there, we end up with negative 5 over 10, which simplifies down to just negative 1 half. Or you could have just canceled out the square root of 5 at the very beginning and saw that it is negative 1 half. Now, our tangent of x is 3 fourths, tangent of y is negative 1 half, 1 plus 3 fourths times negative 1 half, all right? Um, so plus, minus some negative becomes positive, and minus a negative becomes positive here at the bottom. Now, and we're going to look at the numerator first. We need to add those fractions, so we need a common denominator, so I'm going to rewrite 1 half as 2 fourths, and I'm going to rewrite 1 as 8 over 8, adding our, like, adding our fractions on the numerator, and then adding our fractions to the denominator. And then to divide fractions, you flip and multiply. And I end up with 10 elevenths. So the tangent of angle x minus angle y is equal to 10 elevenths. Okay, let's find the, the difference formula for sine. So recall that sine of x is equal to 3 fifths. Cosine of x we found in part a to be 4 fifths. Sine of y, we already found it to be negative square root of 5 over 5. And cosine of y was given as 2 to the square root of 5 over 5. So remember, our difference formula for sine is sine of x cosine of y minus cosine of x minus cosine of x sine of y. I right, plug in our information. We end up with 3 fifths times 2 to the square root of 5 over 5 minus... 4 fifths times negative square root of 5 over 5. Multiplying the first two fractions together gives us 6 the square root of 5 over 25. And the last two fractions gives us plus 5 the square root of 5 over 25. Adding those together, I get 10 the square root of 5 over 25. This one will simplify down farther to 5 the square root of 2 the square root of 5 over 5. Now I'm going to apply the, the difference formula to help me figure out some new identities that we need to learn and memorize, and that is the cofunction identities. And these are like two functions that are closely related to each other. Um, and so the first cofunction identity says that the sine of pi over 2 minus x is equal to cosine. So that's going to be our difference formula. So sine of the first angle times cosine of the second minus cosine of the first angle times sine of the second. And recall that pi over 2 is 90 degrees, and our order pair that goes with that is the point zero, 01. So our sine is 1 and our cosine is 0, so we're going to plug that into our formula. And then 1 times cosine of x is cosine of x, 0 times sine is just 0, so cosine, so this, so this sine of pi over 2 minus x is equal to cosine x. Okay, let's see how you did. So Pi over 2, remember, is the order pair, 0, 1. So our cosine difference formula is cosine of the first angle, which would be pi over 2, 
times cosine of the second angle, which is x, plus sine of the first angle, pi over 2, times sine of x. All right, so cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1. Simplifying that down, I get sine of x. So the co-function identity for cosine of pi over 2 minus x is sine of x. Here are all six co-function identities. So we already figured out the first two. Sine of pi over 2 minus x is cosine of x. Cosine of pi over 2 minus x is sine of x. These are co-functions. They are, um, they are um, each other's, um, they're the answer for each other's co-function. Secant and cosecant are also co-function identities, as you can see as you work through it here. And tangent and cotangent are considered co-function functions.